That's right, guys. We have finally been heard by Blizzard Entertainment. Now, before we make assumptions, first of all, I just want to make a huge disclaimer right now. I think WoW is probably in like one of the best positions it's been in for a very long time. We've got a lot of content. We've got Season of Discovery. We've got Battle Royales. Unfortunately, on a temporary basis, but hopefully they exchange that. We've got... Um, retail we've got classic we've got hardcore and there's this whole pandaren vibe thing coming very soon that none of us absolutely know what's going on we've data mined something so we've made assumptions but we don't quite know so i wanted to take a second and go through this season four dragonflight dungeon changes the rate changes and what was probably meant to be an April Fool's has left the PvP community in bits because it's probably one of the best changes that we could see the game make. But that's right at the end of the video. So, kicking things off, Season 4 is upon us now. The people think it's going to be released at the end of this month or the end of April sometime. There's no confirmation on that, but obviously we've also got this whole panda thing coming as well, so that I assuming they don't want to clash the two together um so they're probably going to release one or the other at the end of april and then the other one will come later i hope it doesn't take too long but let's go with it so the dungeon changes now this is something that people have been crying about for a very very long time now mythic plus as a standalone is a great piece of content however they didn't really capitalize on it too much because mythic plus became this entity that you just did every week to get your weekly you maybe did the plus 15s just to get your achievement you maybe did the plus 20s just to get your portals and that was it like there was no hardship to it and as we've seen most people complete the plus 20s within the first month of the expansion obviously if you're a full tryhard you'll get it within the first week or first couple of weeks but that was it. Like Mythic Plus has never really been like this huge thing. Yes, don't get me wrong, there's a huge community out there that play Mythic Plus only, but they never really had anything to kind of say, wow, I want to go and play Mythic Plus full stop, no matter what. And Blizzard have listened. So starting off in season four, now this is something that wasn't meant to come in the next expansion, but they've kind of brought this back into season four to see, I think they're just testing it, not gonna lie, um, but to see what's happening. So right now, as we can see, you've got normal heroic, mythic zero, mythic 10 and mythic 20. And these are all timed keys we're talking about here. In season four and beyond, we're gonna have normal heroic, mythic zero and then up to mythic 10 will be the exact difficulty that we are currently seeing so if we look at this chart here normal is going to stay the same difficulty heroic is going to see a huge jump up to mythic zero which for most of us that's not much of a jump but for the casual average player that is going to be somewhat difficult and then mythic zero is going to be the equivalent of a current plus 10. now that does send some shivers up a lot of casual players minds because a plus 10 would be like something they would do four five six months down the line so it, it's like a challenge for them to complete that so i see a lot of people looking at this and go oh my god what am i going to do however blizzard have thought about that and i like what they've done so they go into like a huge spiel about why they're doing it what they're changing why they're doing it but I'm interested in the gear. Now, if you want to read all of this, you can. I mean, I'll link it down below. You're more than welcome to go into it. But we are here today just to go through the key points. So if we look at the item level, so currently on the left-hand side, this is what we've currently got. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to get season four. Now, obviously, keeping in mind season four, you're obviously going to get a item level boost because they always do every patch. Otherwise, it wouldn't be World of Warcraft. So kind of... Don't look at the right hand side of the glass as NF, what you're talking about. Of course, it's going to be a higher item level. The idea here is to look at the item level jump. So, a normal dungeon currently drops a 421, which it's going to do the same in season four. However, when we get down to heroic dungeons, so currently you only get an adventure rank one in heroic. However, in season four, doing an, an event doing a heroic dungeon will give you an adventure rank 4, 476. Now that is a huge jump. We're going from 460 to 476 
just by doing a heroic dungeon. Like that is pretty OP, I have to say. Then when we get down to a mythic zero, you are going to be getting 493. So it used to be that you would go from 421 to 437 just by doing a normal to a mythic zero. Now you're going to be going from a 460 all the way up to a 493. That is a huge, huge jump considering the max item level is, I believe it's going to be like 530-ish, give or take, because that's myth two. So it's probably going to be around 530, 535. So considering you're already getting 493, and that's a champion rank one. So if we go down, champion rank four is 502. So you're looking at like a 510 piece of gear just from doing mythic zero straight off the bat. That is crazy, crazy loot. Then as we go up the loot here, you can actually see that in your weekly chest, if you only did mythic zeros, you would actually get a 506, a hero track one from your chest. That is crazy. I mean, like, I have to say, that is absolutely crazy, in my opinion, okay? Now, yeah, because this is Dungeon Rewards, this is Grey Vault, so we could literally just spam one Mythic Zero a week and get full hero gear. That is pretty gnarly, in my opinion, because it's going to help with alts it's going to help with the casual player not feeling like they have to go and spam you know plus 10s 12s 15s 19s etc etc because you you simply don't i mean as we can see here you're going to get a myth track one from doing mythic plus eight to nines like that is insane and they're going to get a myth track two from doing plus tens so clearly they're making a huge emphasis on first of all gearing people really really fast but secondly, making a huge emphasis on going going a, going the extra mile with your character, like without having to go so high. So you're not going to have like the Andy saying, oh, you've not even completed a plus 10 yet. You're not allowed to come into my plus 19 to get my insane weekly hero track two piece of gear. No, that's going to be an absolute load of rubbish now, because in actual fact, we can just do a plus 10. That is absolutely insane that they have made this change now. Something to take note on this, and I think we need to play it to be able to comment on this. However, I want to know how hard the Mythic Zeros are going to be in spect of how hard they hit and how much tactic behind you you have to have to be able to complete the dungeon. Because if they're going to be super hard and super tactics, and the average player playing a Mythic Zero is going to be there for hours completing that plus zero. So I do hope they find that fine line where, yes, it's going to be challenging. But on the other hand, it is somewhat doable still in a pug um, that you don't have any communication or you don't have you know a bunch of Andes in there playing the game for you. So that is something that is quite interesting. Now, moving over to the actual dungeon pull itself, we have none other than the Dragonflight Dungeon Pool. It is simply going to be Dragonflight Dungeon Pool. And rest assured, guys, because we all know when we first started the Dragonflight expansion, the dungeons are terrible. Just hands down, the worst dungeons that they've probably ever made. Aesthetically and pleasing, they're amazing. But actually, for content, they are terrible. You have to run from the start of the dungeon to the end of the dungeon if you die. There's no spawns, nothing. They have gone ahead and updated every single one of the dungeons to reduce some of the clutter, to reduce some of the aesthetics, to make it somewhat easier to play in a Mythic Plus setting. They've added points of resurrection and checkpoints, if you like, through the dungeon to make it easier. So they are really trying to make this a bigger thing. Now, we will, closer to the time, go through each dungeon individually, show you the changes and highlight them. However, right now, this is still in alpha. Um, so this is something that we need to be playing before I can start making you any type of videos. Something to, quite interesting is we've got plus twos, fives, and tens now, so you won't get any more affixes. So you'll only get two affixes until plus 10, and then at plus 10, you'll obviously get everything and above. Um, they haven't announced a seasonal affix yet. 
that is something that's interesting. Um, I don't know whether they are going to introduce the seasonal affects or whether that is something that's not going to come to fruition. Um, now we do have also our beloved mount. It's just a reskin, but it actually looks pretty damn cool. I think this reskin, this is one. If you haven't got one yet, this expansion, I would strongly recommend you try to farm it. Now to get it, you need 2k rating or above, um, but that is something that you could definitely do. It's not that far out of your reach, I have to say. Now, for raids, they've kind of gone the complete polar opposite way. They really haven't, in my opinion, put much effort into the raid scene yet. Now, I say yet because we don't even actually have a release date for this, so this could be something that's in the making, but they may just be working on it in the moment. So Awakened is the affix, if you like, that they're going to be adding to raids. So every single week, each raid will get a the affix of awakened and then you can go back redo their content for higher item level gear so as you can see the defaults for awakening raids 480 to 489 490 to 502 um 506 to 515 and 519 to 528 again i feel like they should change this because like if you just read this tooltip this week bosses in this raid are empowered loot drops are upgraded i mean what are we awakening just the dungeon, just making it slightly harder. You would have to make it slightly harder because your item level is higher. So it's a bit naff in my opinion. And for the myths for like a heroic raider, this isn't that big, big of a deal because you only need to learn like two or three tactics per boss. But for a mythic raider, if you haven't mythic raid in all of these raids, or you've only just started mythic raiding in a ridge result, for example, and then you're going back to vaults, you're going to really reprogging that entire week to get those bosses dead. So that is something that is going to be interesting to see um, nonetheless. Now, if you have the legendary axe, um, you don't need to worry. You don't need to go and refarm that. You can actually just straight up upgrade it yourself with the bronze plunder. So you can go to the vendor, you can buy scales of awakening. And then with that, you can upgrade the axe to the max item level. Um, and then the behold you can do that you can also do it with the fist weapon by the way so that is something that's quite nice to note um they haven't added it to the staff yet that i'm aware of but that could be something that they bring in later down the line now one of the things that they have brought out is this um bronze bullion now with this you can buy gear the gear is actually pretty good it's 528 here um obviously if you complete the raids, you get the awakened stuff. And then with the awakened stuff, you can buy the mythic stuff and so on and so forth, just like standard World of Warcraft. Um, however, with just the standard bullion, you can buy gear that you can actually upgrade all the way up to the max item level. Um, now, we don't know how much of this bullion you can get. There is, at the moment, on the PTR or the alpha, um, it says max stacks of 12. So we don't know whether you can only get 12 per character. So you're going to have to um, go ahead and look at whether you want to upgrade your axe or not with that character. Um, but I think this is going to be something that you can farm over and over again. If it's 12 per character, it kind of is a bit naff because they have brought back the mount that we know of um, from down in Shadowlands. If you didn't do the raids back then when it was pre-patch for Dragonflight, now is your time to get it. But if it's 12 per character, you can only get 12 on like you have one character and you use that to get gear then you're not going to be able to get the mount so i don't feel like that would be a thing but this is blizzard entertainment so i don't i don't see it not being a thing let's put it that way now that being said there is a lovely little mount so by doing this you need to do all of the boss or all of the raids on normal difficulty at least on the, when they have the awakened affix on it and you get this saucy little fox um now we don't know whether this is a dragon riding mount i'm gonna i'm gonna assume it is but at the moment we do not know but that is it for the official changes now you can go ahead and stop watching this video now and move on to something else but i wanted to take you guys to something that was posted today and this has upset a lot of people in my opinion now, this is PvP changes that somebody posted from um, somewhere and they've copied and pasted it over to Reddit and it's made its way to Twitter and now loads of people are super annoyed with it. 
it is an April Fool's joke. However, the changes that they're actually saying in here are pretty dope. Like, so the general changes, weekly rating inflation is now dynamically adjusted to compensate for periods of low participation. That is insane. Like that needs to be a thing because right now what we're seeing in WoW is the ratings are super, super weird. Like if Waz or any rank one player goes to queue, they will never, ever, ever gain rating unless they're queuing with another team in front of them with the same rating because nobody's got that rating because there's not so many people playing anymore. So the ratings aren't going higher. This is something that should definitely be addressed at some point. Solar Shuffle. Now this, this made me laugh quite a lot. The deserter debuff for leaving Solar Shuffle is now for one hour and goes for all the characters on your account. That should be a thing, 100%. Leaving a Solo Shuffle now incurs an MMR penalty equal to the amount of subs subtracted CR. Again, that should be a thing. In the event that a player leaves the Solo Shuffle, all other players are returned to an increased priority queue. Again, we've never heard Blizzard say that there is a priority queue, unless you're a healer. Um, however, unless they've got like, a little badge thing. However, this should definitely be a thing in my opinion. If you've sat there, and I've done it myself, you've sat there for like 20 minutes waiting for a game, you get into the game only for somebody to leave the game, you've literally wasted about 30, 40 minutes because now you've got to queue for another 20 minutes and wait for somebody else to join the game and hope that they don't leave the game. So this, this is definitely something that should happen. Um, it is no longer possible for the same two players to be on the same side for more than two rounds. Now, for me, I don't really think that's really... Like, I understand why people don't like it because if you've got like a... I don't know, like a Destro and a Resto on the same team and they're absolutely owning the entire lobby, and then they're on the same team for more than two rounds, you're guaranteed two losses. But on the other hand, it's more practice. Clearly, if you're losing to it, you need more practice into it. So it's kind of a helpful thing, but I don't know. Some people see it the complete polar opposite way. Field Medic Hazards Hazard payout now contains significantly more gold and has a small chance to drop one of three unique mounts. That is definitely something that should be a thing. I mean, you queue up as a healer, you get a little bag, you get nothing. Like, it, it, you get absolutely nothing. You just get a little bit of gold, maybe a few materials, and that is pretty much it. MMR gain for healers has been adjusted to increase healer representation at higher ratings. That should be a thing. However, I don't agree that it should be an MMR gain. I think there should be some level of system whereby they should calculate a bit like they're doing a battle royale. They calculate wins versus kills. They should do the same with healers. They should calculate the HPS or something based on the healer and how many times that healer lost a match the same two people in the solo shuffle or the same one person in that group and then do the MMR based on that as well as the wins and losses um, because there is obviously some times where you queue in and there's somebody that never presses any button, never presses a defensive, doesn't ever burst, doesn't ever CC and just goes around slapping everybody with their weapon. You would pretty much guarantee a loss unless the other um, DPS can carry it. But again... Rewards, new seasonal ground mount has been added. Reigns of the Verdant Legions <laughs> battle. Um, the Legend achievement will now award Reigns of the da -da -da -da, Battle Bear instead of the Legends Pennant toy. That should definitely be a thing. To get Legend, it, it's mad how long it takes you to get that achievement and you literally just do it for a toy. Like, that has to change. New achievement added, double act, win 50 games at elite rating or higher in 2v2, rewards Reign of the Virgin Legion's Battle Bear. I mean, the person that made this definitely wants the Battle Bear, but again, I do think that that should be a thing. Maybe not the Battle Bear, but like a different mount. That'd be quite cool. Maps, Bladed Arena has been excluded from both rated and solo shuffles. <laughs> I get it, but... Yeah, that's that's a good change, I guess. 
Some environmental details have been removed from the ceilings and elevators around some maps. That has to be a thing. They need to fix this positioning because they've even doubled this up with the development note, which by the way, this is how I realized it is a April Fool's. Like when I was reading this, I thought it was quite genuine, but the development note is never has a bullet point, is always like a sub point onto that point. That was the only thing that gave it away, just a little side note. But anyway, on some maps, it is possible to unintentionally place ground targeted abilities above the arena. This change has been added to address this. That happens countless amount of times. You watch streams and it happens. You do it yourself. It it's just something that happens because the physics in the game it it is weird. <laughs> it needs to stop, man. That has to be a thing. And the pounders of oh the boundaries pounders what English hello the boundaries of certain pillars lacking sufficient clarity have been refined and adjusted. Again, that is a thing that has to be sorted. I can't tell you how many times I've been running around a pillar with somebody and they can hit me from the other side of the pillar, but then I can't hit them because I'm too far to the right-hand side of the center of that pillar. Like it, Blade's Edge Arena is one of those ones that you can definitely do that in. But anyways, that is my rant over about PvP. These are all the changes. I really do think Blizzard are starting to listen to us. Hopefully they make some more changes for the raiding side of things for people and also some much needed PvP love. But we'll see what they come up with. Stay tuned because I'll be coming out with more updates as they come in for Season 4. Take care, guys. Have a good day.